The Unshackled Waves, Episode 13. Hello and welcome to the Unshackled Waves podcast. I'm Tim Wilms and we're here for this week's review episode, uh, talking about this this week's events. And uh, my co-host for this week is the Unshackled Associate ed- Editor, uh, Luke Roughly. Luke, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for being here. So there's there's quite a bit that's happened in the in the past week. Uh, we had the the last uh, sitting week of the federal parliament before the the summer break, and there was there was a few pieces of the legislation passed. But what got the the most media attention was on Wednesday, uh, a group of uh, re- uh, protesters at par- at. Parliament at the House of Representatives shut down uh, question time. Uh, f- they were from what was called the, the Whistleblowers, Activists and Citizens Alliance, and they were uh, protesting against the uh, the uh, refugee processing centres on Nauru and, and Manus Islands. And they, they, they refused to leave and even superglued themselves uh, uh, to, the, to the public gallery where you can view Parliament. So... Um, uh, they got the the attention they were after, certainly. Yeah, they definitely did, um, and that's exactly what they tried to do. Um, I have no issue if they were protesting outside of Parliament House, but once they once they actually enter in the Parliament House and disrupt our democratic processes, um, to me that's a criminal offence. Um, and. I, I haven't seen that anyone on the right do anything um, similar um, in the past, um, and it only seems to be the left that would take things to such a stream um, on a continuous basis. Yeah, I mean there were there were no arrests made at all. They were just they were they were, they were removed, which was which was pretty difficult for the parliamentary security staff. I mean you had to feel sorry for them. Uh, they, they refused to move and they had to drag them out. And uh, some of the protesters they screamed and uh, yeah, it was you know it's t- uh, telling the telling them they were being hurt and uh, it. it no, they 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 made the the biggest scene ever. Yet they and in fact they returned the next day to uh, f- to walk up the the lawns onto the roof and un- unfurl a banner which read uh, "Close the the bl- the bloody camps." So they've because nothing happened to them the previous day. They uh, f- they came back again for another go. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure what um, they could have been charged with under Australian law. Um, but it's something we definitely need to look, look at. Um, anyone entering the, the Parliament House and disrupting proceedings, um, very essential proceedings around the country, um, there should be some sort of law active out there that can uh, they can be charged with. Um, but I really wonder if they can be charged with a, a um, sort of public nuisance or something like that. Um, I'm sure if the police wanted to, they actually could have probably found something to charge them with, but it just seems that um, everyone just gets this like over this nowadays. Yeah. I, I mean, and for those who say that, oh, you know, they were just exercising their free speech. No, Parliament, I mean, the, the purpose of Parliament is for... That's a forum for our elected representatives to speak. I mean, uh, anyone can be at the the front where it's public property and protest, but the, the Parliament, the House of Representatives and the Senate, that's for our elected you know, representatives to speak. I mean, uh, free speech doesn't mean you you know you can go and invade someone's home and and just speak there without without their permission. Yeah, exactly. There's plenty of opportunities that they get to have their say. There's plenty, of, yeah, um, forums and um, blog stuff that they can have a say, just like we are here. Um, they don't have to go and do what they did. Um, but the, the other thing that I actually want to bring up about it was the fact that um, the Greens MP, Anna Brandt, um, put out a Twitter tweet straight away basically um, supporting it and saying how proud he was. Uh, for an elected official to be going out and saying that, um, to me it's disgusting. Um, 
he's effectively representing the Australian people and you can clearly see where he's lost his life. Um, and it's just another reason why we have to do something to get the Greens out of Parliament. But they do not listen to the general public. And like I said to a lot of people, the every poll you see on um, the offshore processing centres always goes towards uh, the majority of Australians supporting it. Um, and one of the, the activists actually spoke to the press and said that um, the government wasn't listening to the people. Well, actually, the government is listening to the majority of the people. They are just a minority. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's exactly right. I mean, the polling consistently shows that majority of Australians support uh, offshore processing and, you know, don't want to, you know, op uh, they, these people, they basically want to you know, open, open the borders and just let any boat, any boat uh, come in and, uh, we, uh, and you know, basically have, have a situation that we're seeing in, in Europe at the moment. Uh, I mean, uh, we have, and it's not just, obviously, the, uh, polls are just one thing, but we had, we had a, an election in 2013 where uh, the, the Abbott's, uh, Abbott Coalition's policy was to, to stop the boats and the people voted for, uh, voted for them based, based on that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so at the end of the day, they are our representatives and the majority have spoken. Um, so it's okay for these activist groups to um, do petitions and things like that, but to disrupt Parliament and then the claim that they're speaking for the majority is just complete and utter rubbish. Um, and the other thing to remember, they, they claim to be humanitarian um, people and yet uh, 1,300 people died um, under the failed right to NBI policies um, out at sea. So, and, and there has been no one since um, Abbott came on board. Um, with his with the current offshore processing policy, so um, the actual say the actual good thing to do um, to save lives is to actually have a strict um, border policy. And also, the allegation that they make is, you know, we're running uh, concentration camps on Nauru and, uh, and Manus Island, and that we're we're torturing people. And and it was interesting that that protest uh, actually happened the week where uh, Sky News's Laura Jays actually went to went to Nauru and, and did a report from there. And like we got to see what you know these supposed camps look like. I mean, uh, I mean they're not they're not glamorous. You know, they're not a five-star hotel but you know they're not you know a series of tents they're actual you know buildings uh, I mean people are free to move move around the island there's you know there's food and medical care I mean yeah it's obviously not the best but you know it's 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 not destitution no definitely not it's probably a lot better than what they were used to um, all their needs are met, um, and, and most of the incidents that you have there um, usually involve the actual people on the island themselves um, not eating and, and doing self-harm things and stuff like that. Um, so there, there's not major illness or anything like that running through the, um, the camps. Um, yeah, they're, they're very well looked after, um, and like I said, it's not the greatest, but um, we meet our obligations. Yeah, and it was interesting. A lot of the the refugees that she she spoke to, well, you wouldn't actually call them refugees. I mean, uh, some of them were had been in uh, Malaysia and uh, didn't like it there, and so they they came to Australia. Yeah, country hopping. Um, at the end of the day, the other thing is that every single time that we um, allow someone in via that by those means. Um, it is taking away a place from um, general refugees who can't afford to pay $10,000 or whatever it is to um, jump on a boat. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, aware, I, I, we do actually reduce the numbers um, of our, our normal uh, refugee intake um, when we're taking people who go through um, bad ways like that, basically. Uh, yeah, it was definitely clear from watching the stories. I mean, these are not sort of the uh, the, the people fleeing, you know, war torn uh, Syria or in other countries. I mean, uh, if you looked at them, they were like properly clothed. I mean, uh, you know, the, obviously the places where they came from were were not were not the best, but they certainly weren't uh, weren't the most desperate people in the world. Yeah, no, definitely not. 
And it was also, uh, like, obviously, uh, despite the fact that the uh, majority of Australians are supportive of the, the current government uh, policy, it, it doesn't stop the, the left uh, holding these protests, whether they're, whether they're um, for refugees or, or, or any of their other issues. I mean, uh, if, if they can't win at the, at the ballot box, they'll try to uh, yell and scream as much as they can in, in public. Yeah, that just seems to be the way that um, they act nowadays. Um, they refuse to accept any democratic process. Um, as soon as something doesn't go their way, they're out on the streets. Um, and even if it doesn't directly affect them, they're out on the street. You saw that with Donald Trump rallies in Australia, um, anti-Donald Trump rallies. The fact that they're occurring in Australia is just ridiculous. Um, we didn't get a vote on it. Um, and the rallies have absolutely no effect on what's going on in America. Um, but that doesn't stop the left. They, they don't have any opportunity to um, go out there and, and raise their voice and, and push their agenda. Um, and in the process of doing that, they, they hope that they can basically shout down anyone who disagrees with them. I mean, they are somewhat successful in that. I mean, and especially when the the media is so sympathetic to them. I mean, they managed to get that uh, the event that was supposed to happen uh, this weekend in Melbourne. It was it was a information session by conservative Jewish group with Pauline Hanson and Malcolm Roberts that got cancelled yep. because of uh, potential uh, leftist protesters that were going to be there and Victoria Police told the organisers, well, we can't guarantee your safety, so get some uh, private security staff. Yeah, and anyone on the, the right side of politics has to be aware of those sort of things when they're organising events. Um, I know I was with um, ALA. Uh, we actually had um, registration online where the event didn't, details didn't go out until 24 hours before the event um, to try and stop the ability for people to organise protests. So we would just basically say it's held in Blacktown or Sydney CBD um, and people would have to register with their phone, phone numbers and everything so we could SMS them and we'd have a list of people. Um, and that's the way we had to do it. And it's, a, it's disgraceful in a democratic nation that we have to do things like that. And that we have to be um, always looking out for um, possible troublemakers or, or protests um, and stuff like that. And even in organising events, we had so many venues who would just straight up say, no, we won't host you because we know it'll, it'll spark a protest. Yeah, I mean, I go to the, the pro-life uh, March for the Babies every year and, and they have to have a large police presence for that because uh, more often than not uh, far left groups are there uh, counter protest well wouldn't say counter protesting they go there trying to attack the attack the marchers and so it requires uh, a, a large a large police uh, presence and uh, and it can be quite intimidating for a lot of there's a lot of families that come uh, and older people who just want to uh, have their have their voices heard on an issue. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it seems that a lot of the, the more radical left, um, so we're talking people like Antifa and stuff like that, um, they really don't care if they get in the face of an elderly person or um, anything like that. We've seen footage at different rallies where they're kicking um, police horses and they've got their, their faces covered. Um, and the funny thing is the media will always twist it back around to actually portray that it's the, the right that is... Um, the, the yeah, they they always say, oh, it's the the uh, the right wing rallies that are always the the violent ones. Well, that's because uh, the left always uh, turn up there and try to and try to create violence. I mean, have you ever yeah. heard of violence at a same sex marriage rally, for example? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and there you you'll never see us. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's I mean it's getting quite uh, out of hand here, uh, or, or especially in Victoria, that you know people. Well, that's part of the the broader broader sort of issue of people are afraid to sort of speak up on a lot of uh, political and, and cultural issues for fear of of this sort of retaliation from leftist groups. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a lot of people you see on Facebook that use um, pseudo IDs and stuff like that um, because they're afraid of 
the, the impact that they'll have um, in work and, and things like that by staff um, and their opinions. I refuse to back down. I've always been public in everything I've said. Um, and it's caused me trouble at work. I know there's people at work who um, have read articles that I've written and, and know what I do politically and that, and they frown upon me and um, they've said a few comments that I, I need to have a, a lower profile and stuff like that. Um, but uh, it's freedom of speech and I, I've always been freedom of speech, so I'm not going to be one of those that back down. But you're getting back to what you're saying. It, it, there's so many people who are afraid of the consequences of speaking up. Um, that evil will just completely stay, stay mute um, or use a pseudo identity um, out of fear of what the left might do to them. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that's one of the, well, especially in, in our sort of political circles, the, the fact that there are a lot of people who are afraid to uh, reveal their identities. I mean, I wish we could we, we could live in a you know society where you know you could be free to you know speak your political beliefs and not have to worry if you know you're going to get fired or your business shut down. Yeah, exactly. It should be that way. Like we, I, I have people um, in different jobs I've worked at where I've worked with raving socialists, um, but at the end of the day, if they can do their job um, effectively. Um, I won't let that affect my relationship with them at work. Um, but it never seems to go the other way. Um, if you have a left boss um, who with strong beliefs um, and they know you're um, pro-life, for example, you will cop it and it will affect your career. So I'll move on to the well, uh, the next topic, which is, or dare I say, come back from the dead, which is that we could, uh, well, under a conservative government, uh, have the return of the, the carbon tax. Now, I should explain what uh, what we mean by that. Uh, the, the Turnbull government has announced a review of uh, the government's climate change policies, and they have not, uh, in this, in the terms of reference for the inquiry, they are not explicitly ruling out a, a carbon tax, which has has alarmed quite a, quite a number of people. Well, they don't call it a carbon tax. They talk about pricing uh, mechanisms, uh, all these sort of weasel words, but it, it's, it, it does mean, at the end of the day, a carbon tax. Yeah, and I think um, the Australian public has clearly spoken out on this. Um, it, it's been a big campaign um, for no carbon tax, um, which has seen the Liberal government get back in. Um, but then they're now be looking into that, they're going against the wishes of people. Um, there is nothing good that can come of um, bringing in the carbon tax. Um, our economy will suffer greatly from it, we'll see increased um, utility prices, um, cost of living will go up for everyone. At a, at a time where we're struggling to keep um, manufacturing in Australia and businesses in Australia, we don't need additional expenses for our businesses. Um, we cannot survive as a country if we continue to tax the hell out of them and you know I'm a conservative and, and I'm just, I, I, I cannot afford another tax um, and really, honestly I, I don't believe um, that the, the climate, climate alarm are correct in um, the data that they bring out um, being 100% factual. Um, I think that there, it is always good to use some environmental friendly things when you can but we just don't have a severe issue that, that requires us spending billions of dollars um, or companies spending billions of dollars um, given, given to the government in taxes um, over it. And it's not a level playing field either, it's not every single country um, doing these sorts of things as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, uh, I mean, part of the, uh, the problem is that we're even having this uh, inquiry. I mean, uh, I, I think no matter if it's a if it's a carbon tax or another type of uh, intervention in the economy in the in name of cli uh, climate change, I mean, I would much prefer if we actually had a, a liberal conservative government that said, no, we're not going to have you know we don't we don't believe in in this climate change theory. We're not going to do anything. But it's I, I think. It, 
obviously, even if we don't get a, a carbon tax from, from this inquiry, we're going to get some form of uh, intervention. I mean, the, the coalition still supports a, a, the renewable energy target. I mean, obviously not as high as Labor, but they still support, support it, which that puts up uh, pr uh, prices on electricity and, and also leads to the closure of what we've seen that South Australia no longer has any coal-fired power stations and Victoria has just closed uh, one of their major ones. So we're, we're still headed in uh, a dangerous direction in, the, in, in, this, in this fight against uh, climate change, as it's called. Yeah, and basically um, the, the type of renewable energies that we use are not producing enough electric loads. Um, we saw that in, in SA. Um, and we're not, we don't have any strong alternatives. We refuse to use nuclear in Australia. Um, so basically, um, we're not in a position to be shutting down all these coal power plants at this stage um, to meet demand. Um, and, and basically, also, we, we have now some of the highest electricity prices in the globe. Um, so it just can't keep going the way it is. A, a carbon tax is, or any sort of alternative tax similar to that, is just going to push up prices even further. Um, and we're just not in a position to be able to accommodate that at all. Yeah, I mean, we saw another blackout in, in South Australia last week, and a lot of commentators have been saying that, you know, summer hasn't really started yet, where, you know, uh, when peak electricity is is at, a, at its highest and everyone's got the air conditioning on, and so what, what's going to happen then? But yet, uh, even though, like, we're, we're seeing... Or, Seeing all this evidence that renewable energy can't can't handle, especially a, a, a mo uh, the demand, energy demands of a modern economy, we're still seeing you know governments you know uh, pushing us down down renewable energy. I mean, will the penny ever drop for them? Um, well, hopefully it, it has at least in the United States with Trump going to um, withdraw from the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Um, Australia has committed over a million dollars um, to that, um, so that's just another big chunk of our um, taxpayer money going over to that as well. Um, so however you look at it, it's just damaging to the country. Um, we can't provide the, the demand, um, we can't afford to do it, and the loss of jobs and everything. Um, and that's why the Australian public clearly said no to a carbon tax or any equivalent tax in the past. Um, and basically, Turnbull government and um, the people behind him to actually be doing this. Um, we have voted for no carbon tax, um, and it's a shame that there's not some. If he if he goes ahead with it, it's a shame that we can't find a way of actually calling an election because he's completely and utterly broken our election promise. Yeah, I mean, uh, luckily, uh, Cory Bernardi, uh, for example, has already um, publicly said that, you know, this is the stupidest idea ever, and I thought we'd settle this issue, and, like, there are um, uh, backbenchers who are dismayed, uh, dismayed at uh, Tur uh, Turnbull's announcement. Uh, so there is uh, some pushback in the in the coalition, and, and Barnaby Joyce has been, uh, has stressed that, you know, we're, we will, we the National Will never support a carbon tax, so he will face uh, a lot of uh, opposition because uh, if he does adopt this position. But still, uh, with Turnbull as prime minister, you, you you definitely know that you know he's he's not looking after our, our best interests. Well, not just in this area, but in any uh, political issue or cultural issue. No, definitely not. He's, um, in my opinion, a full-on UN puppet. Um, but basically, the thing we've I've noticed with Turnbull, he is, you can tell he's under pressure within the Liberal Party. You can tell there is a bit of a fight back from the right within the Liberal Party, led by Cory Bernardi, George Fisher, and Eric Albanese and others. Um, and control to a little bit seems to be going back to the right. I wouldn't trust them. Um, I'm, I'm still doing what I'm doing politically because I just... The, the, the Liberal Party is too infiltrated by um, left-aligned politicians who just want to appease the Greens. Um, but there's definitely a pushback, um, and hopefully that pushback will be strong enough to um, stop any, any further talk of the carbon tax. I'm going to have no class, so I'll backpedal on that. 
Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, it's certainly we'll have to we'll we'll certainly be watching this this issue in the or in the the coming weeks and months. I mean, uh, it, it's not a pleasant uh, Christmas surprise. Uh, if, if you can call it that, I mean, uh, this really came out of nowhere, but it's certainly, I, I guess it's an indication that with Turnbull, we, we really have to uh, keep, our, keep our guard up. I mean, if, you know, we're, we're not certainly governed by a, a liberal conservative government under Turnbull. Not at all. So we might uh, head overseas now. Uh, to well, there was quite a few events that that happened in Europe over the over the past week. Uh, the first first of that one was uh, the results of the Italian constitutional referendum, which uh, was an amend was seeking to amend uh, their con their constitution, uh, which failed. It basically wanted to reduce the the power of the Italian Parliament's upper house. House, which uh, heavily favoured the uh, regional and rural parts of Italy and would make it easier for the, the ruling party to get its uh, legislative agenda th through. So it was basically a massive power grab by the, uh, by the ruling party, which is already unpopular, and it was a referendum that was, uh, uh, had, the, had the support of those in the, the European Parliament, so its defeat was, was somewhat pleasing. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's been a, a real shift over the last um, few years in, in Europe, um, more back to um, the more centre right of politics. Um, there's still a long way to go. Um, and a lot of the parties that have come out have actually had to start from scratch um, because there's no real alternative party or centre right party that people can vote for um, across these nations anymore. Um, for that referendum to get down, it's just another um, thing that shows that the um, people of the world are just sick of um, the power in the hands of the politicians. Um, and anything where they're, they're trying to grab more power, um, the people are going to fight back against that. Um, the, the people want um, better representatives in Parliament, they want more say, and, and they clearly want more democracy. Yeah, and the Italian Prime Minister who called the referendum, I mean, he's fallen in the sword and, and resigned, uh, as he should, after, after such a uh, resound, resounding defeat. Uh, so it's certainly good that, um, yeah, this, this pushback against or, uh, the, the, uh, the ruling elites uh, in European countries and also the, the European Union is continuing, but it wasn't yeah. all good news because we we saw the the results of the Austrian presidential election where the the Green Party candidate uh, defeated the the Nationalist Party candidate. Yeah, um, that was a disappointing result. Um, everything um, leading up to it suggested that um, the far right was actually gaining power, from what I've read, um, but it, it, it didn't occur that way. Um, I, I, I'm, I still think that in the long run, people are awakening, um, and I think that um, a fight back will continue. And I'm hoping for next election it'll be a different result. Um, but yet we have to wait a few more years for that nation. Um, but there's still some, some more to come up um, uh, throughout Europe. A lot of elections coming up over the next year, um, and there's a lot of the far right parties or centre right parties that are starting to rise and get good um, polling results um, coming out. So um, we've had we've had a good run and with a lot of results lately. One this one is disappointing, but um, I still hold out hope that people are starting to wake up to the uh, left agenda. Yeah, I mean, you can't it can't win them all. I mean, we definitely had a good run uh, this year with Brexit, the return of Pauline, and obviously Trump. Um, so, uh, so yeah, there there is going to be uh, setbacks setbacks along the way. I mean, uh, Justin Trudeau is still Prime Minister of Canada. I mean, that's a pretty uh, <laughs> that, that's a pretty uh, bad outcome at present. But yeah, yeah. Uh, as I've said before, like twenty seventeen, there's the, the 
there's the presidential elections in France where Marine Le Pen, I mean, she she has a really good chance of, of winning. I mean, uh, Francis Hollande, he's he's not running for re-election because he knows that he's deeply, deeply unpopular. Um, Gert Wilders, his party for freedom, in the Netherlands is is easily the the, the most uh, strongly uh, performing party, and he he's definitely in the box seat to be the next prime minister of the Netherlands. And in in Germany, uh, alternative for Germany and and Frock Petri, their their support is still only about fifteen percent, but they've been they've been making uh, significant gains in in uh, state elections recently. So 2017 is still going to be a big year uh, for the for the new right. Yeah, definitely. Um, I will win. Um, and then in relation to um, all the others, um, France is in a good position. Um, so things are looking up um, over the next year. And um, so I have to be walking around under my feet. Uh, but yeah, things are looking up um, over the next year and, and things will um, continue to, to get better for the, the right side of politics, in my opinion. Um, and that's happening all over the world. Um, places that you've mentioned Canada before, it's going to take a lot more time for nations that are clearly, um, I guess, indoctrinated a lot, a lot more than, than others um, to, to turn things around. Uh, I, I couldn't believe that the spin that was put on the the Austrian results, saying, "Oh, this is uh, a part of a pushback against the against the far right." Well, you you won, you know, one election, you know, well well done on that. I mean, but you know, Austria, it's it's not really the 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 center of center of Europe. I mean, it's country of basically eight million people. I mean, it's not where the the big decisions are made. Yeah, and you you see the the media latch on to things like that. Um, there's no doubt that the media is still very um, left controlled, um, and and you see it in, in a new agenda to try and um, switch switch things back around to them. Um, publications like ours, The Unshackled, um, has been under attack in the media. Um, they're trying to paint um, everyone in this um, far right or right category um, and link it with extreme um, views and stuff like that were more just normal conservative from strong values and stuff like that. Um, so that will be their agenda to try and paint us um, in a bad light and any time that we the, the defeat to anyone on the right, um, I'll jump on that and, and try and make out that um, there's a pushback on their side, which there is a pushback, but it is not as great as what they actually think it is. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and of and of course in in Europe, well, in Britain, we're seeing the well, the British people thought they'd voted for for Brexit, and Theresa May said said when she became prime minister that Brexit means Brexit. Yet uh, the uh, the pro uh, EU Remain people are doing all they can to to sabotage the the exit process. I mean. The, the High Court ruled that uh, uh, Parliament had to trigger Article 50 of the, the Lisbon Treaty to begin the, the exit process, and now the government's appealing to the the Supreme Court and the uh, Labor opposition, Jeremy Corbyn, they're trying to also uh, uh, negotiate uh, uh, a less than uh, ideal uh, uh, exit from from the European Union over over this uh, over this setback so there's still a lot to do for for brexit to become a reality yeah and it's a, a real shame that this sort of things occurring um, the, the majority of people um, have voted and they clearly wanted to leave the EU um, and at the end of the day, government is meant to be there to represent people. But um, as usual, um, people with a globalist agenda or um, left the mind um, refuse to accept democratic um, things and, and basically will do anything in their power to try and change that. Uh, go on, there, you've got that going on at the moment, that um, Supreme Court case. Um, I was having a look at some of what's happening over in that uh, about an hour ago, um, and I'll check that after this, this conversation. Well, it's a very interesting um, court case going on, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, and there was, I mean, 
uh, it's, uh, I mean, it, yeah, like I said, they're doing all they can to, to, st to stop Brexit. And there was, there was a by-election not too long ago where the, the Liberal Democrats candidate uh, won. And, and that was supposedly a, a sign that the, the British people were, were turning against uh, Brexit. And uh, and that was like in a really affluent part of part, a part of London. Uh, so you know, no, I don't think that uh, one by-election in the heart of heart of London is a sign that uh, people uh, people are as it's called Brexit regret. I don't th I don't think that's representative of it at all. Yeah, no, not at all. And I think if they actually held a, another referendum. Um, Tomorrow, I think the results would actually go a little bit more further towards uh, the get out vote. Yeah, well, they they tried uh, after after the first vote to lobby for uh, a, a second vote. We saw those <laughs> that petition uh, c circulating, but uh, so far, the well, at least the the Conservative government uh, wants to implement Brexit, but they're really having to yep. to fight all the all these forces attempting to sabotage it. Yeah, um, and it, they should have already started implementing uh, um, a breakaway by now. Um, but yeah, as as usual, um, there's been a lot of fight back um, against it, um, and it's just ridiculous to think that anyone would um, call for another poll the next day um, just because the result didn't go their, their way. Um, so, but they left really need to learn what democracy is about um, and what a, a majority victory is. And for our final topic, we might uh, move back oh, to, to our side of the world and just comment briefly on uh, on Monday this week, John Key announced that he was resigning as Prime Minister of New Zealand. He'd been there for, for eight years. He was from the Conservative uh, National Party uh, over there. He, he'd been very popular throughout his uh, reign. He'd won three elections. And interestingly, he, while he was Prime Minister, Australia had had four Prime Ministers. So uh, New Zealand has uh, certainly provided Australia an example in uh, leadership uh, stability. And I've been quite uh, jealous of New Zealand well, over, over this period. I mean, um, yeah, John Key, he's, he's managed to preside over an economy that's growing. I mean, they've got uh, uh, low personal income tax rate. They've got uh, They've got low uh, company tax rate. Uh, I mean, it's it's uh, they're certainly in a better position than than we are uh, economically. Yeah, he's done a great job. Um, he the end of the global financial crisis, he got them through. Um, and they also had the the Christchurch um, earthquake, um, which was a major economic um, dent to the nation. Um, and he managed to get them through that as well, um, quite successfully. Um, so he's done a great job economically for them, um, and that's why he has basically won um, three elections. Um, and it, it's good to see that actually the reason why he's stepping down um, is only family reasons rather than um, not having the support of the party or um, some sort of um, corruption or something like that. So uh, that, that's good to see something like that when you compare that to Australia where Basically, um, our, our political parties can't even support their leader um, for elected um, four years. I mean, yeah, you definitely have to admire a leader who says that, uh, who, you know, even if, like, he could go on to, like, win more elections, says that, you know, no, I've had enough, I don't want to be in power forever, you know, I'm out of here. Like, I think, I think that was, you know, re uh, really good that he decided, you know, that, uh, you know, we, I, I want to move on. Yeah, and um, whoever takes over, they're going to take over a nation in a good position. Um, hopefully it remains um, at the next election a, a conservative government. Um, and basically based on the way that he performed, um, I, I don't see New Zealand um, changing government over there. Um, they may get sick of a leader um, for who has been in charge for eight years, but the fact they're going to have that party's going to have a new leader now. Um, gives that party more chance of actually winning. Uh, 
Yeah, although I've been get told by uh, New, Ze- New Zealanders that I know that like when I when I t- uh, talk about how jealous I am of New Zealand's government, they say, "Oh, New Zealand, it's still it's still um, uh, it's, uh, cost of living still higher over there." And they also say to me, "Yeah, but if the Labor Party got back in over there, it it would just all go all go down the drain." So. Um, yeah, but they're, but they're certainly in a in a good good position, uh, New Zealand. But it's also worth pointing out that even though he he was a good prime minister, John Key wasn't he, he wasn't much of a like a conservative in terms of social policy. Yeah, um, I, I don't know um, he, his social back, policy background one hundred percent in New Zealand. Um, I mean, I he. Followed. I mean, he. Uh, well, he didn't. In, you know, he allowed uh, same-sex marriage to be introduced. He also led a ill-fated campaign to to change the New Zealand flag, which you certainly wouldn't see a conservative leader uh, uh, do in Australia. But it's interesting. He sort of uh, su- survived sort of those unconventional positions. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that seems to be. Why, when, he, when I was talking before about the, the new um, centre-right parties um, breaking out across Europe um, and in, in Australia as well and, and across the world, um, and that's because the established um, conservative and centre-right parties are, are not basically um, looking after the social values that they used to hold dear to their hearts, basically. They've um, all embraced um, same-sex marriage, they've all embraced um, a lot of left-leaning policies. Um, and for a traditional conservative, um, they, they won't accept that nowadays, so that's why we're seeing all these new parties. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that um, he was more left leaning on social politics. Um, there's no doubt that um, pretty much most of the modern day um, political parties have left conservative services left as the years have gone on. Yeah, that's, uh, that's certainly interesting. Uh, well, that's the end of uh, our discussion for, for this week's review show. Uh, a few important announcements uh, before we uh, wrap up. Uh, the uh, Unshackled is uh, sponsoring uh, uh, two uh, meetups hosted by the uh, Australian Right Wing Safe Space, which is a Facebook group that uh, all of the editorial team are members of, and that's where we promote a lot of our articles. They are hosting a meetup on uh, in Melbourne on Wednesday, Wednesday the 14th of December at uh, Riverland Bar at Federation Square at 7 p.m. And then there is one on uh, in, Sid- in Sydney uh, on the Saturday 17th of December at 5 p.m. at uh, Bankstown uh, Sport- uh, Sports Club. And so if you're a, uh, a listener and supporter of The Unshackled and you're in Melbourne and Sydney, we'll certainly uh, uh, like to have you uh, come, along, uh, come along and attend. And also, uh, Luke, you're uh, continuing with uh, War on the Left uh, Facebook page as well? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, we'll be doing um, a bit of a different podcast this week. Um, the first two were just done by me. Um, but we're actually I'm inviting Adam and Damien, um, the other two administrators, or these four administrators. Um, the other two will be um, doing um, a more sort of chat like this, basically. We'll, we'll pick um, three topics and um, we'll go over them for um, the, the about 15 minutes, five minutes on each. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so there, and also uh, with the Unshackled, we're uh, we're continually producing uh, more content, more articles, and we're soon to be. Uh, we soon we aim to soon be rolling out uh, more uh, video content as well. So thank you, Luke, for being my co-host for this week. It's yep. it's been a blast uh, having a chat with you about the issues. Uh, so that's it for us today. Uh, we'll be back for our interview show later in the week. And don't forget to check out uh, www.theunshackled.net for all the, all the latest news. And don't forget to subscribe to The Unshackled Waves on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, TuneIn Radio, and you can now also view the video version on YouTube. Uh, so thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.